Hello, welcome to the Horticulturalists. I am Matthew Lucas. And I am Stephen Ryan. And we post a video every Friday. So why not subscribe and press the alert button so that you can keep up with our continuing horticultural adventures. Yes, and if you've got a question for Stephen, we do a short every Monday where he answers your pressing, burning horticultural questions in 60 seconds. So if you've got a question, tell us where you're from and put it in the comments below and Stephen, We'll attempt to answer it. I'll do my very best. And Stephen, once again, the hallowed halls of Dixonia rare plants. Yes. Why are we here today? Well, part of what we're here today for is to look at a range of trees yep. that have a very svelte, narrow form, yes. which botanically are known as fastigiate trees, mm -hmm. which means that they're narrow and pencilly. Uh, and they can be terribly useful in horticulture, particularly as gardens are getting smaller, so spaces are getting much more precious. Mm. Uh, Often you don't want to plant a tree that's going to billow out if it's going to go out and over your fence and annoy the neighbours. Mm. You always seem to have a neighbour that's annoyed by anything you plant. So it's a good idea to have a sense of something that will stay within your boundaries. And of course, fastigiate trees can also be useful as a centre point to the end of a vista. Mm. So they give that sort of sculptural element that mm. uh, you look down and you see this sort of obelisk type tree at the end of mm. the vista. And they can be used in lots of other ways around small to large gardens. I mean, there's no reason why you can't use them in big spaces as well. Yeah. And they can be used for avenues and uh, that sort of thing too. So they're a great group of plants. And amazingly, lots of fastigiate plants have been discovered over the years in completely and utterly unrelated plant groups. Mm. So... You know, keep your eye out at a batch of seedlings. You just never know you might find the next fastigiate one. Well, we should go on to the next. In fact, the first fastigiate tree, because I am very interested in this whole subgroup. Yeah. Let's go and look at the first one. Let's go. Fastigiate tree. Look at the foliage on this. Yes. This is, I think, something that's only just come into horticulture in Australia. Yep. It's probably been available in America and other places for some years, yeah. but it's still, by horticultural sort of timelines, comparatively new. Mm. And it's a form of pin oak, and its common name, or its cultivar name, is Prin Green, which is its registered name, yeah. uh, but it's generally known as is Green Pillar. Yeah. And it's a wonderful, very narrow growing tree, should get up to about anywhere between five and eight metres tall. Yeah. and it'll stay quite slender so it's not going to take up terribly much room now when you say quite slender because obviously this is the deciding point about people growing these trees or not how slightly slender is it well <laughs> because it hasn't been in the country all that long i can't promise what it will do with old age yeah but having said that it certainly grows about 10 times taller than it does wide yeah. uh, and so it's quite felt as a young tree mm. and i haven't seen anything wider than a metre uh, in even larger trees that I've seen around. Right. And so they can be quite tall and probably a metre or less wide. Right. So it would be an ideal tree if you needed something with quite some height, yep. but narrow for along a fence line or boundary line, yep. uh, along a driveway perhaps. Uh, but all of these trees are perfect for. Yeah. Um, and I mean, this is quite an advanced specimen and it's very narrow. It yeah. hasn't, you know, lolloped about. No, it but hasn't. The foliage, the autumn colour, my goodness. Yes, you and can I'm... imagine a row of these oh. uh, along a driveway or something with this fabulous uh, burnished red coloured autumn it's foliage. And got green veins. Um, the, oh, the leaves are just stunning. Yeah. Well, I would happily live with this in a narrow and confined space. Yes, in a smallish garden, one might say. <laughs> All right, well, let's go and look at another fastidia tree. What a good idea fastidiate tree outside the cafe. Yes, exactly. And this is something I planted in 1985, and it's a pencil form or fastidiate form of the North American tulip tree. Mm. So Liriodendron tulipifera fastigiata. And there's one thing I'll say about this tree, apart from the fact that it has a nice felt habit, which mm. is what this whole story is about. Mm. If you're buying a tulip tree and you buy a seedling one, you can wait 10 to 15 to 20 years to see your first flowers. So it's very slow. Some of us may just be alive yeah. at that point. But if you buy a grafted one, so whether it be a pencil one or the variegated leafed one or the gold leafed one or whatever, yeah. they're grafting adult wood onto a seedling understock mm. and the trees will nearly always flower within about four or five years. Mm. So you'll get the green and orange flowers of the tulip tree. Mm on a tree that you don't have to wait until you're a seriously old person to get. Well, fantastic. It's got a beautiful leaf and a beautiful form. It's a bit 
what are we calling it when it billowy yeah it top. billows a little bit it's not as felt as some of the narrow trees but nonetheless uh it stays comparatively upright and in the spot it is here quite close to a building uh it's up and away and out of the road and also power lines which it doesn't interfere with so no. perfect trees as well well planted yeah i thought I, I thought that was an inspired choice all right on to the next if you're standing in front of my pot shed probably yes. not the most ornamental part of the nursery no but above the pot shed we have a fastigiate tree right yes. yes and it's growing in a narrow bed that's only probably a meter and a half wide and i wanted something tall that was going to block the wind a little bit from that sort of direction yeah. and it's a pencil form or a fastigiate form of the european hornbeam right so carpenus betulus funnily enough fastigiata <laughs> <laughs> but it does in fact point out that not all fastigiate trees are really skinny and pencil like mm. it's a comparative term so mm. it's much more upright and narrow than in fact the normal hornbeam would be mm. uh, and like the rest of us with age it tends to belly out a bit but there you go <laughs> what can i say but i think it's important the whole notion of fastigiate trees is that as you mentioned garden and available space is getting smaller so you tend to think i can't plant a tree mm. because i don't have the space but i'd love to because obviously you know we need to capture carbon by planting trees and yeah. it's just good for the environment but there are options there are dwarf trees fastidia yep. trees trees you can grow in tubs so no matter really what your circumstance you can find a tree and yeah. do your bit for the tree future well, we need to. Uh, you've pointed out all the reasons why. Mm. Um, but aesthetically, uh, if you've got things yes. that are tall enough to pull the house into the landscape, yeah. then the house then no longer becomes the dominant feature yes. on the block. And unless you're terribly house proud, I think that's a really good thing to do is to try and pull your house into the environment. Mm. So I would put any amount of effort I could into growing trees with a stigiot form. Yes, well... We're renovating our house, Stephen. There's a narrow front garden, uh -huh. and I would like two fastidious trees which do different things. We'll have to do a video about what you recommend. Yes, what a good idea. But anyway, we should not get caught up in my life. Yeah. Let's go and look at more fastidious trees. Good idea. Now, there was another beautiful fastidious tree that we came across, a copper beech, doing our copper plant foliage story. Yes, and in fact, uh, it's a magnificent really dark purple foliage plant with a quite narrow form and it's Fagus sylvatica darwick purple such a beautiful tree i'm disappointed it's gone stephen you might i'm not to, i sold it you have to find me another one <laughs> but let's go and look at the next vestigial tree what a good idea all right mr lucas yes. we have here a narrow form of the very well loved mm. ginkgo biloba the maiden hair tree yes and you can see it's classical maiden hair tree foliage yep a very primitive plant it's been known to have existed about uh, 290 million years ago and they found fossil remains of ginkgo leaves in coal so it's a very ancient group of plants and mm. this is the last surviving species mm -hmm. and over the years they found several fastigiate forms mm. so there was an early one just called fastigiata yeah obviously there was another one from america which i'm assuming was selected because it was even svelter and narrower and what have you yeah. uh, that is around the traps as princeton century mm -hmm. and this one is new to australia this one is one called lemon lime spire mm. not sure about the name but anyhow could it be the leaf color is it Lime yes, it, it's it's got a yeah it's got a lime Lovely. colored green foliage in the summer and it goes bright lemon in the autumn yeah. and it's spiry i get the sense of oh, the name okay. yeah but nonetheless it seems a little predictable but anyhow yeah. <laughs> now this is supposed to get to about five or six meters tall and only about a meter wide right so if you're looking for a very svelte tree mm. uh and you're patient because ginkgos aren't the world's fastest growing trees mm. so it will take a wee while before it starts to get a bit of size to it mm. uh but you know a decade down the the track you should have a respectable tree and it is really a handsome plant and the sellers of it in this country have decided to give it a label nearly as big as the plant but anyhow i do find that a little objectionable i have to say because it's a dreadful waste of plastics and we shouldn't be doing it but you know there you go yes um now ginkgos there is there is a, an australian specialist of ginkgos and he said there is a ginkgo for everyone yeah. i.e 
some can just be in pots, some can be bonsai, yep. some narrow gardens, shades, and the whole yep. kitten can be Big tree, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So this one will condition sun, shade. Yeah, the ginkgos are remarkably tough. Yeah. They use them as street trees in uh, parts of Europe, parts of North America. In New York. I used to live in New York in Brooklyn, and the stench of vomit. Ah, now that's the other thing about a ginkgo. If you're buying one, buy a grafted known male variety, which lemon lime spire is, Princeton century is, the original old fastigiata is. Mm. Uh, you can get many dwarf ginkgos. Most of those have been selections that have turned out to be male. Yeah. If you buy a female ginkgo, you have to put up with the stink of, well, it really does smell it like, smells vomit. like vomit. Yeah, uh, when the fruit falls and starts to rot. Mm. So you can't know from a seedling ginkgo whether you're going to end up with a male or a female. So you do have to buy a named grafted variety to avoid the fruit, unless you want the fruit, which is really odd because some people will. Yes, well, if it's just not near you. So the ones in New York line the 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 footpath yeah and because you're walking over the fallen berries it's literally like walking through vomit porridge for the entire like oh straight. you paint a picture mr lucas you oh, really do gross. but having anyway. said that there is a cultivar out there called queen of fruits mm. which does exactly all the same thing so it's still mm. going to stink and all that sort of stuff but it has extra large fruit mm. uh, and of course in china the kernel of the seed mm. is considered to be a delicacy they're roasted and eaten oh, right. uh, so the kernel and in fact uh, ginkgo's and uh, the name is uh, comes from the chinese for silver uh, apricot and it's about the fruit so there would be those who would buy it for the fruit mm. because they want to be able to cook the kernels but you have to put up with the smell so smell there you vomit. Go. oh my goodness all right let's look at the next fastidia tree what a good idea Okay, next cab. All right. Well, this is one that we've already featured on one of our videos, yes. so we will link it below. This is a plant called Tuna sinensis. It's sold around the traps in Australia, still by a now defunct name of Cidrella. Mm. Um, and it's the Chinese Toon. Uh, it gets the most amazing colour. Oh, my goodness. Actually, we'll show you the label. Oh, the pictorial label gives a little bit of a sense of it. Why not? But we actually have pictures which we're dropping in yeah. now. So I, near me, there is a mm. restaurant that has this in a bed that's like the tiniest triangle yeah. near the outdoor seating, it's tiny. And this thing, it's on the corner of, of a street too. Mm. So it's the most amazing spot. Every spring, it's just like flames erupting from yep. the soil. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's the most remarkable, outrageous flamingo pink when it comes yep. out into leaf in the spring. Mm. And as we mentioned in the video, it's also got edible foliage. Oh, I forgot that. Yes. What I thought you were going to say is then it does nothing. Yeah, well, and, and basically you're right. And then it doesn't do anything much for the rest of the year. Mm. It goes a sort of a yellowish color as the foliage is shedding, mm. but it's all about its spring color. And it's very vertical in its form, yeah. although it does have a slightly suckering habit so you've got to put up with the baby suckers that come up from the bottom but the thing is if you're looking for a fastidiate tree it's generally in a contained space and that yeah. will naturally contain suckering yeah. yeah unless of course your neighbors have got a lawn on the opposite side and it goes straight under the fence and comes up in the neighbors true but true yeah true. it could do that too but i i love this and i well it could be in my life I could choose. So I need viewers. I need two fastidiate trees in, in the front garden of our house we're renovating. Now, you did tell me, though, that in the early stages, your initial plan was to have things that were going to be yellow Vulgar. and purple. Yes, yellow and purple. So, so I, where's the pink foliage of this oh, going to fit into don't your... A, don't be a pedant, Stephen. <laughs> All right, we won't choose that then. Yeah, yeah. You'll no, have to find me I fine. think it would look a bit odd amongst purple and, and yellow, to be <sighs> okay. honest. But anyhow. We'll but find something else. If you become broader in your taste, then you might like to put this in as well. I will not evolve. <laughs> All right, well, we've got to go and look at another tree. Yes, let's do that. Let's go. More fastidiate trees, Stephen. Yes, and in this case, it's a very popular, although mm. not all that well known in Australia, type of crab apple from Japan, mm. uh, Malus shonoskii. Mm. Now, I just today found out with a little bit of research that it's probably been taken out of the Malus genus and put in another one all on its own called Macromeles Schnonskii. Okay. Uh, but anyhow, it's a uh, Japanese crab apple. Uh, it has very attractive sort of russety fruit. So yes. you can see the berries here. White blossoms in the late spring. It has a nice upright teardrop shaped habit. So not 
narrowly fastidiate, but mm. reasonably upright. Mm. And it can turn the most fantastic colours in the autumn, mm. bright orangey reds. And this tree is just starting to turn a little bit at the very top. So it's one of those trees that if you're looking for good autumn colour, it's got to be up there on your list because it's a really orange red. So it's there's plenty of things that got red, red leaves. There's plenty of things that got yellow leaves. But getting things into that slightly more orangey tone uh, can actually be somewhat difficult to do. So this Malus or Macromeles, as it possibly is now, is a great tree. Uh, because it's a crab apple, whether it's in the same genus or not, uh, they're grafted onto the same uh, commercial apple understocks. Yeah. So you can grow this anywhere you grow an apple tree. Basically. There you go. In terms of hardiness and water and heat, etc. And I guess the other thing to just demonstrate is that these are right slap bang on the side of a house between, yeah. well, either side of a doorway. And that is one of the perfect expressions of where to use fastidia trees exactly. in these narrow spaces to maybe frame architecture. Yeah. These are doing their job admirably. And I sold these to the owners of this house. Of uh, course you did. Of course they did. Uh, around about five or six years ago. So oh. they've grown quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are a fabulous looking yeah. tree. But I think there is one more. On this same property. Okay. Uh, and about the same age that we should finish with. Let's go. So the last fastidious cab off the rank is this one. And this is probably one of the lesser fastidious trees, but it's still comparatively upright. Mm -hmm. And this is also a tree that for a long time was in the genus Malus, so the crab apples. Yep. Uh, and it has also been taken out of the genus with one other. And it's now in a genus called Aereolobus. Yep. So this is Aereolobus trilobatus. And it's a cut leaf crab that grows right through the Balkans, right down through Turkey and through that sort of Mediterranean region. Mm. And it has late white flowers in the late spring, green fruit and maple shaped leaves, which turns fantastic colors as the autumn comes on. And this one's also playing host to a grapevine growing up through it, which is already starting to turn. So a really lovely tree. Uh, and like the other crab apples, grown on a commercial understock. Mm -hmm. So anywhere you could grow a classical apple tree, mm -hmm. you should be able to grow this area lobus. Uh, and I, I love that. So berries or fruit, autumn foliage, spring flowers. Yes. And a tight habit. So yeah, it's not as fastidious yeah. as some of that we've seen, but it's not wide. Yeah. So ideal for a smaller garden. Oh yes, or a absolutely, definitely. And any of those trees that do more than one thing throughout the year mm. can be seen as paying their way. They can. So the flowers actually come out on this particular one quite late in the spring. So they even come out when that main spring madness is just about over. Right. So they extend your spring flowering period. Mm. Uh, the green fruit look attractive on the tree, particularly if they hang around when the leaves turn in the autumn, because mm. the green fruit against the, the red maple-like leaves in the autumn can be quite attractive. And its form in the winter is still quite handsome so it makes a nice silhouette a fabulous tree and again this one is planted either side of a, the gate uh, by the drive and just not taking up no. any space yeah. and and they're giving a sort of an entrance to the property yeah. by by having that sort of upright form it sort yeah. of makes the entrance far more important visually there you go well i think we've done fastidious trees 101 how interesting and so useful in the modern garden, the modern urban garden anyway, yep. and civic planting where those narrow spaces, you can still grow a tree. Well, exactly. Now, how can we follow up our fastidious tree epic, Stephen? Well, maybe we'll do one about weeping trees or big spready shade trees. Who knows? <laughs> Could be anything next week. We'll go to the polar opposite on the colour spectrum. Yes. Uh, well, if you want to know what we're doing next week, you'll have to hit subscribe. We post every week on a Friday. And on Mondays, we have our 60 second shorts. So if you want me to answer a question for you, put it in the comments section below. Remember to put in where you're from so that we have a sense of what part of the world you're in. Uh, and I will endeavor to answer your question in less than 60 seconds. There you go. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye all.